Welcome to the series where I analyze every Omori track, including music theory and lore behind each entry, as well as rank all of them in one continuous list. Seems like our music reviews have taken us into space. Getting here was surely an experience, climbing the tallest ladder there is. Looking down, you could see the entire playground and even most of the vast forest. Yes, you were scared of heights before that, but it seemed like, if you had your friends alongside you, nothing could go wrong. Your enthrallment with the sight is reflected in the music. Sounds appear, float and disappear without any apparent purpose. It feels so magical, so momentary and, at the same time, so eternal. You feel like everything is going to be okay. Huh? God damn it, seems like Whitespace gets musically mentioned every time a disjointed mush of sounds happens to exist, as we previously saw with the place by Lake. I'm not opposed to these uses of the motif, I just really didn't expect for it to show up so often. This mood of wonder partially carries over to two other tracks, one of them being Sugar Star Planetarium, which uses a super simple formula to construct its melody. Take some chords, write them out as broken chords, Then add some overarching notes to act as a melody, so it's not too boring. Easy and effective. The same trick is even used for the track Resurrections from Celeste, giving it that foggy, dreamy feeling. Lena Rain, Celeste's composer, later builds on that pattern, but the Amori track doesn't need to overcomplexify anything and is fine staying as is. The third track I think is similar is I Will Catch Up. Still not a lot going on here. The track and its location are more grounded this time than the latter, which is why here you can make out a main melody, but you can still hear your thoughts floating around aimlessly, so the melody too is slow and quite floaty. Next up, Lost, then Found which is similar in mood and in its defining elements to Let's Get Together Now, the theme of the playground. Makes sense. They're both for an open location that serves as a starting point for the area, with a few characters to interact with and quests to complete dotted around. As is with its ground counterpart, this track is also rhythmical in a non-restrictive, fun way. Of course, a couple of spacey themes are present to distinguish them, one of which is this synth in the background of theme A that's used to help define the chords. Which, by the way, happen to be the following. Major 1st, minor 3rd, minor 2nd, major 5. This is the same progression used in the song by the Beatles, I'm happy just to dance with you. This so-called theme A ends with the following. This is, by all means, a perfectly adequate ending for a piece. Everything has concluded, and we landed where we started, the major first. But then, something unexpected happens. The composer reels your attention back in with a major fourth chord, and then, while still holding your attention in their firm grip, throws in a major sixth chord at you, starting theme B by doing so. Normally, the sixth triad of a major key would be minor. But here, Pedro Silva made the choice of lifting the third of the chord from a first degree to a flat second. This chord creates an enticing beginning for the theme that reminds you, even if you think you've seen everything, it might just be worth it to stick around and do just a little more exploring. And a little more exploring you indeed do, your journey leading you into a junkyard, where this bop begins playing. You're gonna notice most of the attention is put into percussion, those pitchless sounds that indicate rhythm, particularly focusing on sounds we make with our hands, clapping and snapping our fingers. While the melody kinda... sits back on a couch and stares at the moon while sipping on a banana smoothie. This trick is reminiscent of those lo-fi beat streams, and is particularly good for creating a relaxed and undemanding aura. What's not reminiscent of them is the cheesy, spacey synth 
some variation of which is present in practically every track of the area. This is a very tropey way to communicate space to the listener, but this cheesiness works in the game's favor, since we're in the mind of a likely space-fascinated child. It's on brand, I'll allow it. As you explore the twists and turns of the junk-filled maze, you just can't help but clap along. But then you run into an enemy. This sudden jolt doesn't immediately disturb you. There are a couple of seconds of buffer, represented by this pickup measure. Some of that focus on percussion is carried over from the previous track, though the mood it ultimately creates is completely different. Instead of calm, we got energetic. For the first 10 seconds or so, we linger in a sort of limbo of an intro. The notes kinda hang around the tonic of E, not really wanting to go anywhere. This correlates with a few seconds of the fight where you're assessing the situation and trying to come up with the best strategy. When you ultimately do start your turn, the meat and potatoes of the melody start with you. The rest of the track is filled to the top with simple childish fun. Even though you're in an ongoing fight, you feel confident you'll be victorious. After all, you've got your best friends alongside you. What could go wrong? Finally, as you exit the junkyard with the desire to tape in your hands, you step into the abode of the captain of space pirates. The script says Adobe. Feeling accomplished by the end of this mini-adventure, the melody from the junkyard slows down even further, with some broken chords with barely distinguishable pitch in the background for ambience. You're resting, and the music is resting with you. But just as your thoughts settle, it's suddenly revealed that... And that's the end of this review. Sorry for breaking the very immersive story I made, but I feel the need to talk about this channel. So, for those of you unaware, this collection of videos was made somewhere between April and July of 2023, and then published all throughout summer of the same year. And in September, I... deleted the channel. This was an all-around dumb decision, which I'll talk about in a separate video. So, for now, I'm re-uploading videos from the L channel. Then, I'll re-release a popular video of mine with slight changes to make it more in line with what the rest of the channel has. Once that's done, I'll probably start working on new stuff. And, by the way, this video is the last one that was made in advance. I will now stop posting regularly and stick to my usual once every six months schedule. With that discussed, I also want to ask you, do you guys prefer these longer types of videos covering a range of tracks, or the shorter ones that I'll be able to pump out more often? I'm not comment baiting, I genuinely want your feedback. Okay, enough meta-commentary, here's the ranking for today's episode. I will catch up and Space Road 1979 go here. Love Stick, 80,000 Light Years and Sugar Star Planetarium go here and here. Stardust Diving goes here. Three Bar Logos goes here. And finally, Lost Then Found goes here.